The motive of the young man who tried to assassinate former President Donald Trump, that is still unknown, still under investigation. But for many Americans, including some of the folks that we spoke to here in Milwaukee, the country's overheated and sometimes dangerous political rhetoric set the stage for violence. As many convention goers landed in Milwaukee Saturday, emotions ran wild. Sad state, you know, and people can't have civil discourse. But of all the reactions we heard over our now two days of conversations. Were you surprised when you got the news yesterday? No, not at all. Surprise that the violence has not been one of them. Just a lot of vitriol on both sides. It's not really political talk anymore. I mean, it all has so much battlefield sound to it. Politicians on all sides of the aisle have called for national unity and cooler heads. I think what we have got to see is serious discussion of serious issues and not this kind of harsh rhetoric. We settle those differences through political debates and through elections. We don't settle them through violence. But measure and calm haven't exactly defined American politics lately. Donald Trump's campaign is obsessed with the past, not the future. He's willing to sacrifice our democracy, put himself in power. Many Republicans blame the rhetoric of President Biden and other Democrats. Who is responsible for this division? I think it's the fake news, actually. Not the politicians on either side, but the media? I think, I think like the media is, uh, is creating all this rhetoric. When you start convincing the public that Trump is Hitler, I mean, who doesn't want to take out Hitler, right? Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. For As for the former president's own history of divisive language. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats. Which including claims of a stolen election. Supporters tend to hear him differently. There are people in the center and on the left who think Donald Trump is responsible for a lot of the political rhetoric, and in particular, violent rhetoric in this country. I don't believe he's waking up the people. There are some here in Milwaukee who won't pin our extreme politics on any particular political party. I see it as an issue with, I'm not gonna say both sides, I'm gonna say all sides. And that's why I say we must get together and speak as a nation. But beyond how we got to now, there is concern that we haven't yet seen the worst. I'm scared of what could potentially happen next. What is the, the scenario in your mind? Something possibly against the Democrat Party. And uh, we don't need that in our society. You know, that's other countries. That, that shouldn't happen here in the United States. And the solution, at least for the moment, as elusive as it is obvious. How do we cool things off? Well, we're in Milwaukee, so have a beer. Sit down and talk to your, the person sitting next to you. It's a matter of conversation and uh, communication. Yeah, beer and conversation would be good for all of us. I think that's exactly what the doctor ordered. When it comes to the lack of calm, lack of measure in our politics, that continued up to just a few seconds before that gunman opened fire on Saturday at former President Donald Trump, who there on the podium was calling Joe Biden the worst president in the history of the country. That sort of provocative speech, to put it nicely, has been a hallmark of our politics on both sides of the aisle for a long time, leading many of us to talk about worst case scenarios in America. And I think now maybe there is that possibility to instead entertain what I might call best case scenarios, which are politics that are serious, but are not violent and are not life and death, guys. Yeah, what we all know, Tony, is that you shouldn't die going to a political rally. I, I like what the man on the bicycle said. I mean, I really relate to him when he said, I worry about what's going to happen next. I heard some, I heard a Republican um, leader say, say what you mean without being mean. I think, I wish we could all figure out how to do that. It's very, very deeply troubling to me. I think also people should, you know, we keep saying we should be talking, we should be talking. Yeah. Oftentimes it feels like we're not doing enough listening. Mm -hmm. Conversations where you may have a different position from somebody, it should be, hey, why do you feel that way? Oh, let me understand that, as opposed to, I feel certain about the way things are. Hard to do unity. when you're in the middle of it, though. Very hard. The word unity has been used thousands and thousands of times. Yeah. What needs to be 
What needs to happen is a demonstration of unity, and that requires difficult things in politics because it means not judging the motives of the other person. Right. It means extending uh, grace and some sense of common humanity to them. But we know in politics one of the strongest drivers is something called negative partisanship, which means you rile up your voters by talking about how bad the other side is. Mm -hmm. If that's how you raise money, that's how you get crowds to rally, that's how you get voters out to the polls, those are very strong inducements to make politicians not do the hard work of unity. Right. Mm -hmm. And if, as long as that's still the way the structure of politics works, people can splash the word unity around all day long and yes. shake their heads and it's not gonna change. What are you gonna do? Didn't your mom always tell you, actions speak louder than words, we'll see. Mm, that's right. But we'll money, see. Gail, is what John's talking yeah. about. Yeah, I know, money. I hear him. <laughs> well, John, money and money and motivation, and John's exactly right, and, and here in Milwaukee, these conventions over the years, they've not exactly been soil for growing an olive branch, that's for sure. It's been instead exactly what John's been talking about, but we'll leave it there for now.